Thank you for staying with us on The Breakfast. Now, let's talk about Senator Ali Ndome. He's in the news today because he's been remanded for failing to provide the former pension reform task team boss. I'm talking about Abdul Rashid Mena. In court, um, the court had in, on several occasions postponed um, a hearing. Um, the court says it had upheld the principle of fair hearing provided by Section 36, Subsection 1 of the Constitution and has adjourned the case on a number of occasions to afford the senator enough time to produce MENA or present his case in court. Um, the judge said, and I quote, uh, the defendant has jumped bail. Uh, it is time to make good on his, that's on Dume now, undertaking to forfeit the 500 million naira property in the event that uh, Mena jumped uh, bail. Now, why did a serving senator decide to stand surety for uh, somebody who has a checkered history of um, due diligence, of commitment to a process, and I'm talking about um, Abdul Rashid Mena now. Uh, his reason, according to uh, reports, uh, quoting him, that it, 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 he felt it was his responsibility as somebody who represented um, Mena's constituency in Boronu State. Is that enough reason for a serving senator uh, to be associated with um, such a situation for somebody who is being investigated for corruption. Now, let's have at the back of our mind that the reference to Abaribe will be coming up when it comes to the uh, prescribed IPOB leader, Namdi Kano. What was his role? He also stood as guarantor and has been unable to produce um, um, Namdi Kano while himself is still serving um, as a, um, a representative in uh, National Assembly. Uh, joining us to discuss this now, we have Mr. Wale Ogunade, who is a legal practitioner. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me, and good morning, everyone. Uh, good, good morning. morning. Uh, uh, please help us uh, understand um, the implication of a senator being associated with somebody who is being investigated, standing surety uh, for that person? Uh, refreshing the memory of those who are watching and listening, you remember that Abu Rashid Lena had issues in respect of embezzling billions of naira belonging to the pension agency he was heading. And eventually he was arraigned in court. And a bill was asked by his lawyers. And in order for him to get that bill, the judge ordered that one of those that will stand for him as the short seat or the condition of the bill will be that one of his short seats will be a prominent Nigerian who has a land and somebody who has landed property within the jurisdiction of the court, and of course, taxpayer. And it was very difficult for him to get a prominent Nigerian that was stand for him. And I guess that's why uh, Ndume, in his representative, went to stand for him. I wouldn't know their relationship, but of course, you know, in Nigeria, there's all about the pressure. So maybe the man was put under pressure that well, you can't leave your own now, you can't disown me. And that's why I want to believe he's too short. Okay. But the, the implication is that standing short for anybody is a very risky thing. And I want to believe that this ruling now will be a very sound and clear warning to people who stands short for anybody. And of course, it will stand again as a clear warning to people to always believe good. Because nobody wants to stand short if for anybody again. Okay. The other matter is the issue that you mentioned a few minutes ago is another good example. And there are several. Okay, um, I was going like, to move on to you know another aspect that has, uh, of course, created you know a lot of con uh, controversy. Um, it cr uh, made, of course, uh, these two names start trending online yesterday, and that is uh, Senator Ainaya Baribe. 
Uh, so, um, Mr. Ogunade, I want you to speak on the similarities between the, these uh, two cases. There's people who are already uh, clamoring for Einaya Baribe to also be remanded in prison for failure to produce Namdikanu. Are there any similarities and what exactly might be the difference between these two cases? And do you agree also that uh, Senator Baribe should also uh, be remanded? In as much as they are similar, the matters may be different, the situation may be different. It depends on how the matter is presented before the court. And I know that uh, the judge in, in Bimi's matter, they got irritated by the, by the attitude of the uh, senator or even the lawyer. But again, now breaking it down, both of them are similar and they are the same footing. We call it in law down all courts. It is, it, it is a dangerous thing and it's a bad thing for somebody who is on bail to abscond or not to appear, at, appear in court. Because that's the condition in which he's given bail. And if you fail to appear in court at the net adjunct day, which is a criminal itself, and of course, whoever can shot he must be held responsible. But before I go, for the understanding of people, the, the Black Law Dictionary defines the bail as the process by which a person is released from court study. It's released from custody on the undertaking of somebody who is called a short thing on his own or on his own recognition, uh, recognition. If maybe Maina has been released on bail on his own personality, no problem. If Nandikanu has been released on his own personality, no problem. If he jumps bail, then the, the state will be looking for him. But now he has somebody who he was released to that at the next adjunct day, we must be in court. Oh, and don't um, forget that... Mr. Ogunade, I, I want court, you to bring in the, yeah. the perspective of, you know, people have also mentioned that the reason it might be different for Senator Einaya um, Abaribe is the involvement of the Nigerian army that led, of course, to the narrative now that Namdekano had to flee the country. Um, there was also, you know, statements made that said that the Nigerian army may have been involved in... Um, maybe keeping him in custody, you know, at some point before he eventually was realized that he was out of the country. So does that play any, is that an important uh, perspective here uh, uh, to differentiate between these two cases, the involvement of the army uh, yeah. in 2017, I believe? I mentioned it maybe because I didn't mention the army. I said that they are, two, they are, the, same, uh, they are the same leg, but the situation is different. In law, we call it the intervening forces or circumstance. The army's involvement in Namdekalu's matter really uh, outside the, not the scene from being a normal jumping of a bail situation. Because the man, of course, one of the arguments of the lawyer was that Namde has to flee for fear of the flag. And of course, that made some sense to the judge that, OK, now the situation is calm, bring him back. But the man is telling the sortie was saying that, well, the man has jumped out of jurisdiction, it is difficult for him to lay hands on him and so on and so forth. So the, the you see, law is not sentiment. Like I tell everybody who tries to listen, the um, law is about fact and logic. Okay, I want to ask you, I didn't quite get your explanation uh, for it. So I'll simply, I'll make it a bit more um, um, simplistic. Mm -hmm. Like, could you tell us if there are implications of senators who are law upholders in the society, who make laws for the country, being associated with people who are being investigated for crime against the sovereignty of this country, and in the case of MENA, um, against um, a, a, on an issue of corruption. What are the implications for someone who is watching and wondering why these senators are being associated with people who are being investigated? First and foremost, nobody is above the law, even if you are a lawmaker. The law is that as a short thing, if the uh, accused jump bill, you will be held responsible. That is the law. It does not matter who you are, not even the president. So before you take that step, you should know what the implications are, that they are very grievous. Uh, so maybe associating with, the crim with, with people who have such issues or who are criminally minded, that's another thing entirely. Why? Because 
uh, sentiment is there, just as I said earlier on. You look at it that uh, these my people, people will come and meet you that uh, senator or chief or whatever they address themselves. Uh, part of, part of being a leader is taking tough decisions, responsible decision for the um, wider picture. These are individuals. These senators are representing communities and yes. not many more people who rely on them to provide leadership. So wouldn't yes. it have, uh, have been um, a stronger point of leadership to say that these people are being investigated. I know it's tough love, but they should face the crime. Yes, uh, that's what I said. You see, uh, I said they should be circumspect. I just it's believe that they got carried away by sentiment because they hold a very high office, an office of responsibility, and it should they not be seen to be involved in this type of a situation where they know that definitely it's a big crime, it's a high uh, uh, issue, it's a big issue. And there's a possibility that after the person has been relieved on bail, the likelihood of jumping bail is there. Okay, so they should have weighed it, sought legal advice before they took that decision. Because look at it now, how it has turned into. All right, I think you've um, um, responded to that. Let's look at the uh, perspective that's been brought forward by ROI Youths. Uh, they are alleging that the conduct of the um, freeing one senator and arresting the other for standing as guarantor to these people smacks of, um, I mean, gives room to people saying that the federal government um, is uh, being selective with the application of justice. Um, do you agree with that position? Is the, how does the federal government come into this conversation when the uh, proceedings are from the court? This thing is yeah. For starters, you don't mix law with politics. Law and politics is like water and oil. There is no way that water will consume oil. Law will always meet. That's oil. These are uh, people, are uh, people that are mixing politics with oil or with law. They are just on their own and they are speaking from the position of ignorance. I've explained earlier on that there were intervening forces or situations in the Namdekanu situation and that of uh, Maina. Maina was not under threat, he was given bail and he ought to be in Nigeria to go to court on his third day, but he didn't go. He has to, the law has to be applied. I keep, like I keep on telling people, the law is there. When it's to be applied, people will shout. There are, okay. there are laws. There are, the other day I was in, uh, in America. I saw that people, are, they, I didn't even hear the, the, anybody uh, mute. That's blow the horn, as you call it in local palace. And I asked my brother-in-law that was driving me around, uh, don't cast that horn here. I say, to do what? If they hear anybody hoot, they will check his brain that the person is mentally in, unstable. Okay, but in Nigeria, Bernadette. that's what you see. People do, they know and people do things otherwise. I, I so, want to I wanna, uh, um, step in here. Um, if, if you are, of course, following the um, Enaya, Bari Bay, and uh, Namdekanu story, you know, there, there's a part where he had to request for more time to provide Namdekanu um, um, in one of the court um, uh, uh, rulings, or um, um, deliberations rather. Do you expect that uh, Senator Ali Undume might also see, you know, um, ask that option to be given to him also? Can you request for more time to provide Abdul Rashid Mayna? I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know how he's going to do that because as a lawyer, I know that the court has made a ruling and that ruling will take the test, except he wants to appeal. That's the only step. For asking for time, that time, he has been given enough time which has failed. And yet, I, I remember that I followed it. I didn't just know why that I'm following this matter. I remember just last Friday or last Thursday, the matter was in court, and he was told that he must produce a mina yesterday in court, which he failed to. And that was, before that Thursday, it was after several adjournments that he's required, that he's going to, he's searching for, he's looking for, and he will produce him. And the law does not wait for anybody anyway. Okay, his options are three. First, he's either he produces the defendant in court yes. uh -huh. or pay the 500 million naira or have a property in Asokoro sold to produce that money. Which of yes. these options do you think he will explore since you say uh, the law is clear on this matter? Uh, well, 
I, I, I told you, the, the judge has already made a pronouncement that he should be arrested and detained in, uh, in the prison. That the option is the judge that will have given the option that, okay, forfeit your property. That will be the, but the ruling now is that he will be there until the man is produced. Okay, I, I want to ask also about um, the narrative. There's, I've also seen a few statements online that uh, are claiming that this might be the government's way of silencing a critic because of how vocal Senator Ali Undume has been um, against the government uh, with regards to security issues across the country. Um, do all of these things come into play here? Do you see a possibility of these things being true? It may, just... be, it may be the underlying factor. It may be the below the belt issue. It may not be, but in the eyes of the law, the, the government now, or the law has taken its course. But underlining, it may be, because obviously we know along the line there are some people who have run foul of the law because they are in the good books of the government. The law looks the other way. For your information, anyway, it is the government that generally instigates the law, that makes the, puts the machinery of, of the law in motion. So it may be, it may not be, I will know, it may be a coincidence, but all I know is that as a lawyer, mine is that we want the law to work in this country. It does not matter who anybody is. The law is bigger than anybody, and the rules are there. It does not matter, maybe you are a senator or a house of rep or a governor, don't take laws into your hands. Issues of immunity sometimes may not come up, like this one now. It's extremely out of immunity, and the law will take its course, as you normally say. All right, uh, Mena is um, unlike the case with uh, Namdi Kanu, where he was accused of treason. He yeah. is being accused of corruption. So. His life, a lot of persons say, isn't truly at risk per se. It's not an argument you would have because he was asked, he took the permission to go and take care of his health. What yes. possible reasons do you think um, would Minor be given to justify his continued absence without communicating with the court? <laughs> and what does that imply for his case going forward? Uh, it may not Mena knew he had committed an offense. And he knew that the, that the result of that offense would be a, a jail term. And of course, even if he has not been to the prison, which I know he has been, maybe the, before he was granted bail, he has seen the prison situation. I say, ah, am I coming here to spend years? No way. If I have the opportunity, I will disappear. I can assure you that that's what works in his mind. And he now got that opportunity to falling sick or failing it or uh, just uh, planning it, got the way bail condition disappeared. But one thing I can assure you that uh, the prison, if it's not, all those who have gone against the law one way or the other will go there. So I advise that all these big men, the senators and all of them, should ensure that they uh, encourage and uh, make a law that to ensure that the prison system is improved on, of course, they call it the correctional system now, is improved upon so that the prison, the correctional place is like a home away from home, not a place to suffer or that would dehumanize people. We even thank God before, if you see prisoners being brought to court, you will see they look, they look so bony, they look hungry, and of course, sick because of rashes and so on. So there is nothing better, but it can get better so that even if people now uh, uh, run, uh, have a interface with the law, or as they call it, they have uh, they, they, they violate the law, the Nigerian prison will be accommodating Mr. to them, Gunade. not that they will face sickness and run out of Nigeria. Mr. Gunade, because of time, um, I think we have just you know a minute left to carry on with this conversation, but I, I want you to also speak quickly on uh, the um, other options of being able to apprehend these persons. Um, it, it's always very easy for us to declare that a person cannot be found and has jumped bail and, you know, is suddenly missing. Um, do you think that the government maybe should put in more effort into ensuring that these persons are found and apprehended when necessary um, at oh, times like this? Obviously, the world is the global belief. And there's, there's an organization called the Interpol. And of course, through the Interpol, we have seen criminals arrested all over the world from other places where they have committed their crimes and offenses. Obviously, my is on the surface of the earth. 
and wherever it is, there is a police there. All they need to do is to, to increase their, their activity in terms of intelligence and investigation to fish him out. It's as simple as that. Um, I guess we'll say thank you very much for joining us and sharing your thoughts on the breakfast this morning on this issue. So God be the Lord. To take care. Thank you. Yeah. So a, a couple of things have been playing in my head. First is, why did the court specify a serving senator? And then the other part says, it's probably to make it difficult for the bail condition to be granted. And then I flip over, I think, why would a seven senator choose to make life comfortable for somebody who has been accused of a crime? And then I think again, it flips again and it says, okay, maybe he's thinking as a father, the same father figure you, were, you had issues with the last time, maybe as a father who should protect the people uh, that is his subject. And then I worry again, when you know that there is a high risk of these people scampering, like he alluded to. There is always that high possibility because the prison system here is appalling. And then it all comes down to the same thing I said earlier, the question that I was trying to get an understanding of. Is there some legal um, or um, moral yardstick to you know, ask, why should a seven senator be standing shorty couldn't he it have served the cause of justice better if this man stayed in, co um, in, in custody, went through the process, and is proven innocent? Why make life easy for people who had had easy life and then chose to do, maybe if the court proves him uh, guilty or otherwise, do something that is against the law? So for me, um, I keep playing it as an ordinary citizen who doesn't have all the inside details of saying, no, sometimes don't argue or don't talk because you don't know all the details. I don't need to know all the details. It just does not sit right. It absolutely doesn't. The, um, the factors, you know, were different with the Namdekano story. I, I remember then because of the months and months and months that Namdekano had stayed in, uh, in uh, detention, um, when he was eventually about to be granted bail, there was a lot of clamoring for who would stand up for him. And so Enaya Baribi, I believe, did it as a Southeasterner, as an Igbo man. He decided, Again, I, would, I, would, um, yeah, I, would, I would stay, I would stick up for my own at a time like this. Seeing also the sentiments that were playing be, um, behind why Namdekano was even being well, incarcerated then, then in the if, you, if you're using that analysis, that means there is a similarity between the two cases. Because if it took a senator. So I, I wouldn't say it's a similarity, and this is why. There were a lot of emotional attachments to Namdekanu's case. Um, a lot of Nigerians felt he was being victimized simply because of his call for you know, IPOB and for Biafra and all of that. And so um, it, it looked more like you know, it was, he was simply being victimized by the current administration. And so when the talk of bail came, Aina Abaribe took it upon himself to represent him as his fellow Igbo man. But Burashi Mena's case, there's barely any sentiments, you know, that are similar to Namdekanu's case. Uh, Mena's case really is a case of corruption. I don't know why you so argue with you that there is a lot of similarity, that he's been accused of a crime that they believe he did not commit. So it, they're, sent, they're putting sentiment here and saying that, I mean, he's been there for six months. There doesn't seem to be um, any further push with the case. Why should he continue to be there? Um, I'm responsible for this man. I should so show some humanity and get him out. That could also be an argument that the people from Boronu State will give that necessitated the senator. He said he took six months to make that decision. It wasn't something that was done lightly as well. So That's, in that, that aspect, I mean, some would argue that there is a similarity. Well, I, I personally, I, I don't, I don't see, you know, in, in that, in that way. I personally don't see the similarities in that way. And Another thing that I will point out before we go is um, these. For, this for me also opens up the discussion on what our justice system really looks like and how slow it drags. Because mm -hmm. Abdul Sh Rashid Maynard's case has been on since even you know the previous administration. Um, it does. It shouldn't take that long to find someone guilty of corruption or guilty of of mismanagement of uh, funds. We're talking about two billion naira here of a uh, pension funds. It shouldn't take that long, you know, of numerous bail applications and all of that for, uh, to find someone guilty. And so, so these are some of the effects of a, of a justice system that moves in, in snail speed. If an investigation has been carried out properly 
and um, every single fact of the cases presented before a court shouldn't take that long. Well, that's uh, our reality today. Snow, but sure grinding wheel yeah. of justice. I mean, did you see the seconds in there? <laughs> Snow, <laughs> but grinding. A steady wheel of justice. We'll, we'll see anyway, how this plays out. <laughs> uh, my own concern has to do with a senator standing as surety. That's just my concern, really. But, I mean, what Hello. do we do? Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.